Good day, everyone. Welcome to Therapeutic Yoga. We are going to do an entire therapeutic yoga class using a bolster. Uh, we will also, for today's class, need to use a block or a pillow, whichever you prefer. It's going to be for head support, as well as you will need your trusty little yoga mat. Our focus will primarily be the lower half of the trunk. So we're gonna focus really on the pelvis and the low back, but I am gonna show you a couple of neat little things that you might want to think about using your yoga bolster for at home in your yoga pra practice. So let's start in sitting today. We're actually gonna start uh, in sitting today, not with a breathing activity, but more of a mindfulness exercise. So here's what I want you to do. Find yourself in your seated position on your bolster. Um, once you're on your bolster, options for your legs are many. So you can be in what is called easy pose or tailor pose where or crisscross applesauce if you're in kindergarten. Other options, if you've got a lot of tension and tightness through your hips, is you can kind of keep your legs out and slightly bent, so more of an open, um, an open pose. If your hips are tight but your knees are good, your third option, which is also a fairly good option, is to actually sit on the yoga bolster in a straddle position uh, so that you can be kind of like in a seated kneeling position, but with pelvic support onto your pelvic floor. So those are the three options that I generally recommend. If none of those options are comfortable for you, then obviously your best option to start a yoga cl class would be in sitting in a chair. So find yourself in one of those options. And then once you're there, make sure that you feel that your entire sit bone area, also called your ischial tuberosity, is on the bolster. So maybe take your hands and maybe move your gigantic gluteal muscles out of the way, right? A little bit so that you can feel the exposure of those sit bones on your bolster. And then whichever leg position you're choosing, allow yourself to just feel that there's equal weight through your legs. So if your legs are straight and there's not equal weight through your legs, then sometimes using something to support underneath your legs will help you get that equal weight. Once you're there, allow yourself to use your pelvis and your abdominal and back muscles to kind of just tuck and tilt your pelvis a couple of times and really start to feel where your sit bones are on your bolster. And as you do that, find that point that you're not sinking back in the lowest and you're not sinking forward and the lowest, but you're actually sitting right on top of the bolsters, uh, right on top of the sit bones, you'll actually feel like you're in the tallest position because you're up on bone. And then once you get up on that bone, allow your spine to be nice and tall and then using your pelvis and your spine together, so not hinging or flexing from your low back, but actually hinging from your hips. Just allow yourself to hinge your hips slightly forward to put weight onto your legs so there is actual weight into your pelvic floor. Now, to get your shoulders in a good shoulder set position, just take your arms up like you're holding a tray. Kind of gently shrug your shoulder blades up a tiny bit rotate your arms out, but keep your elbows in line with your trunk, and then just pull your elbows back and down. Squeeze between your shoulder blades, and then gently bring your hands back down to your thighs, and rest your palms down today. And then lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Rest your tongue in the roof of your mouth, it's resting position, maybe the tip of the tongue touching the back of the top T. And then just gently close the veils of your eyes today. So take your eyelids and gently close them unless that makes you uncomfortable. So allow yourself just to find a smooth, relaxed breathing pattern. And then we're gonna actually start with a little mindfulness or meditation on our body awareness today. So your legs are likely crossed. So what I want you to do is pay attention to where your left foot is. So your left foot is likely on the right side, 
A lot of us immediately go to our right foot, but I want you to go to your left foot. Feel where your left foot is contacting your yoga mat or floor. And then be aware of your body as you move up your shin bone. And then can you pay attention to where maybe your left knee or shin bone touches your right calf or ankle? And then be aware of your upper left leg bone. And can you feel that point where the upper left leg bone immediately touches that bolster? And then come up until you feel where that left sit bone is. And then appreciate the weight that you have between your two sit bones. Then take your attention to your right foot. It's likely under your left knee, so it's on the left side of your body. That tricks some people. And then feel where your left foot is touching the floor, the yoga mat. Take your attention up the right shin bone. And can you feel that point where maybe the right calf is touching the left ankle or something? And then take your attention up your right leg bone. And feel where you feel that leg bone immediately starts to touch that bolster. And take a moment to feel that right sit bone. Now, without shifting any weight, can you relax your abdomen anymore, relax your muscles, and literally feel the weight of your trunk go heavier into that bolster, into that pelvic floor? And so a lot of times we tighten our abdominal muscles when we're sitting. Can you relax them? And can you relax your back muscles so that you feel that heaviness that goes into the legs and into the bolster. And then take your body awareness up to your waistband of your pants or shorts. Can you trace that waistband all the way around your trunk? And then take a second to, just, to see what path you took. Did you take clockwise or did you take counterclockwise? And then try tracing that waistband in the exact opposite direction. And then move your attention to your left hand. Be aware of your body's left hand touching your left leg. And do all five fingers touch and contact that left thigh. Can you feel if your wrist is straight or bent? And follow your left forearm to your left elbow. And is your left elbow touching the side of your body or clothing? And then follow your left arm all the way up and find that point where you feel that there's full contact between your clothing, your armpit, and your upper arm. And continue following up as you feel the clothing touching somewhere over the upper part of your neck and chest area. And go to your right hand. Feel your right hand contacting your right thigh. And can you feel all five of those fingers touching? And then just be aware of your body. Is your wrist feeling straight or bent? Don't change it, just feel it, be aware. And then trace up as you feel your forearm all the way to that bent elbow. And then is that bent elbow touching any clothing? And then continue tracing up to feel that right upper arm. And where's that point where that upper arm, clothing and the trunk and the armpit all contact one another? Pay attention to that spot for a second. And then trace upward up to the top of the shoulder, closer to the neck, and feel where clothing is in contact versus where it's not. And then as you kind of trace up your neck, is there any part of your neck where you might feel hair touching? Now, without moving anything with your lips, 
check in where your tongue naturally laid itself. Don't move it, but did it, did it rest on the roof of the mouth? Did it rest in the center? Did it fall backwards towards your throat? And then gently move up your face. Are your eyebrows tense? Are is your forehead tense? And then just go to the top of your head for a minute. And imagine if you could, if there was a bright light shining from the top of your head, would it be pointed straight up into the sky right now? Or is your head tilted or tucked or extended in a position that maybe that light just quite doesn't go up straight? So take this last minute. If you were to make any sort of adjustment of your neck and your head to make that light go a little straighter up into the air. And now imagine a mirror right in front of you. And either keeping your eyes open or your eyes closed, take a nice deep inhale into your nose and then open your mouth and steam up that mirror. Let's do that two more times. Inhale into your nose. Open your mouth and steam it up. Can you hear that ah noise that your glottis makes with your vocal folds? Inhale into your nose. Make a louder ah for me. Really control those vocal folds. And then open your eyes and bring the hands to the center of your heart. All right, so let's get moving. Let's take a deep inhale up with the arms. Start to lengthen through the spine. Turn your palms and as you exhale, bring your hands down and touch your bolster or whatever you're sitting on. Hands to your heart. Let's do that two more times. Inhaling up and then turning the palms. And then as you exhale, come down, maybe even smile. Hands to your heart. Inhaling up, turning the palms, and as you exhale, bringing those hands all the way down. Hands to your heart. Now take an inhale, bring your hands forward, and then as you exhale, open your palms, stretch your arms behind you, lift your chest all the way up. And then as you exhale, bring your hands back together, interlace them, squeeze them, and pull them forward. Exhale, open them up, lift your chest, pull them back, arch your back, maybe even lengthen your neck and look upward. And then exhale, pulling that belly in, stretching those arms forward, pulling those arms forward at the very end. And exhaling one last time, opening up, stretching the chest, lengthen the neck and looking all the way up. Bringing your hands back to resting position on your thighs. Taking your right hand to your left thigh, left hand, just gently bring it to the back of your bolster. So not a forced rotation, just a gentle twist. Take an inhale, lengthen your spine. And then as you exhale, just look over your left shoulder. Don't add to it by pushing with your arms. Let's do that for another breath. Inhale, lengthen your spine. And then exhale, just gently turn and look over your left shoulder. Slowly come back to the center. Left hand to the right thigh, right hand behind you. Do not twist any further, just a gentle opening of the spine here. Inhale, lengthen the spine up, and then exhale, just turn that head over that right shoulder. And inhale, lengthening the spine, and exhaling, turning and looking up and over that right shoulder. Slowly unrotating the head and the neck and the arms, placing the hands down onto the bolster, taking the right hand and inhaling it up, and on the exhale, just gently side bending over, pushing down into your right arm, a right leg, sorry. Rotate your trunk open, take another deep inhale, and exhale, side bend a little further. Inhale, lifting the arm up, and then exhale, dropping the right hand down. Left hand, inhaling it up and then exhaling, side bending over, pushing down into that left sit bone, turning that armpit up a bit more, taking another deep inhale and then exhaling, side bending a little bit more. 
inhaling, lifting up, and then exhaling, dropping your hand down. Very nice. Now, slowly allow yourself wherever you are. We're just gonna do a, a quick little hip opening using our bolster before we get onto our hands and knees. So in this position, allow yourself to have your bolster so that your left leg, we're gonna do left leg first, go a little against the grain here. Your left leg, is kind of in line with either the side or the front of your bolster dependent on where you are. And then in that position with your right leg, turn your right leg, I'm gonna move so you can see me from the side. Turn your right leg so that your right leg is all the way behind you. Now, can you find kind of like the front of your pelvic bone close to the end of your bolster? And then in that position, in that position, allow yourself to take a nice deep inhale. And then on the exhale, just gently bring your hands down onto the floor in front of you. Now, from here, you have an option with the right hip flexor. You can engage it more by turning your toes under and straightening that right leg. But don't do that if your pelvis lifts open. So keep that right sit bone, and if you can straighten it, go for it. But if your, I mean, if your uh, pelvis bone on that right comes off the bolster, just let your knee stay bent. If your hip is really tight, just let your leg stay out to the side. All right, let's do two breaths here. Nice deep inhale in, and then as you exhale, fold over, gently bending the elbows. Either keep the right leg engaged or not. Drop onto your elbows if you're comfortable with that and your left hip can handle it. Taking a deep inhale, reaching the pelvis forward. And then if you want to exhale, folding even more. I'm gonna stay up on my elbows because that's as much as my hips can take it. Maintain yourself here. Take a deep inhale into your belly. And then exhaling out. Gently walking your hands back up turning yourself and then allowing yourself to do a 180 and repeating it all over on the opposite side. So have your bolster so that your right leg now is in front, your left leg is behind, and your, your front of your pelvis bone is very close to the back of the bolster. And then in this position, left front of your pelvis, keep it touching the bolster if you can. If that means your left leg is not behind you, then just gently let your leg be beside you so that that pelvis doesn't twist open. You just won't get as good of a stretch through the right hip if you do that. You're better off keeping yourself in a modified Z pose versus attempting an a pigeon pose. So in this position, option number one with this left hip to get some elongation through those hip flexors, you can turn your toes under and straighten that leg, but again, not if your hip opens. Slowly allow yourself to drop your hands down onto the mat in front of your right leg. From here, take a deep inhale, lengthen the spine and lift the spine forward. And then as you exhale, bend your elbows and feel that beautiful tension into that right hip. Left leg is either relaxed or fully engaged. Nice deep inhale, and then on the exhale, you can even go further down onto your elbows or down onto your head if you want to, completely up to you. Now take that deep inhale into the belly, and then exhaling fully out. Slowly bringing your hands back up, turning yourself onto the bolster, and then allowing yourself to sweep your feet to one end of the bolster or the other and then bringing yourself onto hands and knees, but using our bolster on hands and knees today. So check in that your knees are hip distance. And then when you have that, line your feet and your ankles up behind, stack your hips up on top of the knees, and then figure out where it would be that you would rest so that your elbows and wrists are direct directly underneath your shoulders, and then drop yourself down onto your elbows. Once you have yourself in that position, find the position of your pelvis and your shoulder blades and your neck so that you can do a modification of cat cow using a bolster. Now, if you want to watch the screen one time, I want to show you something we're gonna do with our rotator cuff muscles and our shoulders to kind of add to our cat cow today. 
So what we're gonna do is as you inhale into your cow, you're going to externally rotate into your shoulders. And then as you exhale up into your cat, you're going to internally rotate your shoulders and bring your hands together and give them a gentle little push. All right, so let's go through that three times together. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Take a nice deep inhale, sink the belly spine, lift the tailbone, rotate the arms outward, lengthen the neck and look up. And then as you exhale, curl everything under, tuck the chin, palms together, look into your belly button. Inhale, sink the belly, sink the spine, lift the tailbone, shoulder blades back and down. Arms come away, lengthen the neck and look upward. And then as you exhale, curl that tailbone under, abdomen in, spread the shoulder blades, palm together, chin to chest, look into your belly button. And one more time, inhale, settling the belly and spine downwards, tailbone up, shoulder blades, squeeze, arms nice and wide this time, lengthen the neck and look up. And finally, curling everything under, touch those palms to one another, chin to chest, and look in. Now very gently, take your palms and your hands to the bolster and start to bring the bolster back with you until you find yourself onto your heels. Let your head rest down onto your bolster. Keep your elbows nice and soft. You can either have them beside you or gently resting out in front of you, whichever feels comfortable for you. Now just let yourself rest here. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. Let's do two more beautiful breaths. Nice deep inhale into your belly. And exhaling out. And one more inhaling in. And exhaling out. Beautiful, slowly bringing yourself back up. Finding yourself on hands and knees and this time turning the bolster so that the bolster is going to be between your two arms. So I'm gonna show you a really nice way that you can do a thread the needle with a modification using a bolster for those of you that have tight shoulders but really wanna kind of stretch out that rotation of your spine. So in this position, have yourself so that the bolster is between your arms but not between your legs. Have your left hand resting where it is on the floor underneath your left shoulder. Take your right hand and bring it straight out to the side with an inhale. And as you exhale, just simply let your right hand slide so that it threads right underneath your left elbow. Slide your right elbow on the bolster and then slowly let your right shoulder fall down onto the bolster. Now, when you get into the position that the right shoulder has fallen onto the bolster, gently turn your head to the left and rest your head down onto the bolster. Slowly allow yourself to take that left arm and gently bring it slightly upwards to the front of the bolster. And then in this position, take a nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, try to pull the left, arm, um, the left armpit towards the right elbow. One more time here, take that deep inhale. And then as you exhale, try to drop that left armpit towards the right elbow. Now, can you think about where your pelvis is right now? Can you kind of make sure that it feels like your hips are underneath your knees? Then take a nice deep inhale into your belly here. And then exhaling out. Slide your left arm back and using your triceps on your left side, push yourself back up into those hands and knees. And let's try that over on the left side. So again, resting your right hand so that your right hand is somewhere underneath your right shoulder. Left arm, take it out to the side and take a nice deep inhale. And then on the exhale, thread it just underneath that right hand. Let the elbow of that left side slide on the bolster and then slowly drop that left shoulder down onto the bolster. 
once you're into that position, then begin to slowly let the head drop down onto the bolster, turning it to the right. Start to slide the right arm up. Once you're there, check in that your hips feel like they're still stacked right on top of your knees. And then take a deep inhale and on the exhale, pull that right armpit down towards the left elbow. Nice deep inhale in. Exhale, pull that left, right armpit towards the left elbow. Take a deep inhale into your belly here. And exhaling out. Then slide that right arm back. Using your tricep, push yourself back up to hands and knees. And take your knees now, the width of your mat. Take your toes and place your toes so that you can see that your big toes touch. Slowly slide the bolster back so that it is between the knees. Gently settle your sit bones down onto your heel bones and then begin to rest your entire belly down onto the bolster, chest onto the bolster, lengthen your neck, settle your chin and see if you can get that crown of your head to touch your bolster. Now in this position, just gently drop your elbows down beside you. Modification of child's pose here. Now in this position, you really have an excellent opportunity to use your diaphragmatic breath to open up your low back. So take the deepest inhale you can into your belly and push that belly into the bolster. And then as you exhale, settle that tailbone down and under. Let's do that two more breaths. Inhale, really push that belly into the bolster. Feel that stretch to the low back, and then as you exhale, just let that tailbone settle as more weight sits into those heels. Oh, that's too good. It feels too good. Let's do it one more time. Deep inhale into the belly. And exhale. Slowly walking your hands up, and then taking your trusty little bolster, up and away from you so that it's kind of uh, just a little bit uh, about, a, about a, a bolster height away from the top of your yoga mat. Drop your hips down so that you're laying on your left side and then just kind of snug the bolster up with the hips. Take your thighs and stack them upward. And then in this position, grab your block, trusty little block in case you need it for your head. For those of you that have vestibular issues or anything else, Sometimes bringing your neck into a lot of a side bend can be a little bit disruptive to your visual and your dizziness. So this kind of help you if you have those types of issues. And so in this position, just gently lay yourself down. See if you can find the point where literally your armpit is lining up with the front of the bolster, keeping the knees and the hips stacked, and then gently let the left arm rest down. Use the block if you like for your head, completely up to you. If you don't have tension in your neck and you want to add that gentle side bend to your head, then you can do that with either your arm or just letting your arm, your head dangle. Whatever works good for you is good for us. Now in this position, keeping your knees stacked directly on top of your hips. Let's go with the upper arm first. So take a deep inhale as you lift your right arm up. And then as you exhale, can you reach that arm up and over and touch that floor? Now keep that contact with the floor. Focus on your right armpit for a moment. Can you take an inhale and on the exhale, stack that armpit upwards towards the ceiling rather than forwards in front of you. Now with the right leg, take an inhale and lengthen that right leg all the way away from you. And then on the exhale, drop that foot down. We're not done yet. Keeping that left leg engaged on the floor. Don't let your left leg move off the floor. With your right leg, tighten your knee and then exhale and pull that leg slightly behind you. All right, a beautiful opening through the side of our body there. So now focus on that point between the pelvis and the ribs and take a deep inhale there into your belly. And then exhaling out. 
one more time for me, deep inhaling in, and then exhaling out. Beautiful. Start with the right leg first. Inhale, lift the leg back up, and then as you exhale, slide that leg back in, stacking it on top of the left. Right arm for me, inhale it up, and then as you exhale, drop that arm down. Slowly push yourself up into seated position. Now, we are not done on our right side. What I now want you to do is move your bolster down about six inches and push yourself up onto your bolster. So when you get yourself up onto your bolster, make sure that unless you're really, really tall, make sure that your entire leg and your pelvis is on the bolster. If you do not have space on the top of your bolster right now, when you come down, you're gonna fall off the end of it. So sit further back on the bolster so that you still have space. And stack your knees up, bring your hands onto the floor, and then slowly allow yourself to find this inversion so that your knees are now stacked onto the bolster. Really gonna tackle the low back muscle here now. So with your left arm, you can support your head, but understand that you're in a beautiful inversion here. So really nice for the guts, really nice for a lot of organs of your body. So your neck is going to be in a fairly neutral position just to lay onto the mat. But if you're uncomfortable with it, you can certainly use something to support your head. Left arm can just gently rest out to the side if you like. Now, let's go back with what we started with just the exercise before. So take your right arm, inhale it up. And then as you exhale, touch the floor on top of you. A lot easier to do now because it's less focus on the rib cage. But hold on. Grab the left leg with the left arm now that the arm is overhead. So left leg, left arm. Hold them together so that we don't create any rotation through our low back here. Right leg, take that inhale and push that right leg out. And as you exhale, pull that right leg to the floor. That's it. Now in that position, just like before, we're not done yet. So take an inhale, straighten the right leg and on the exhale, slide it back a tiny bit. Beautiful. Now, can you maintain this position and take a deep inhale into your belly on that right side and exhaling out? Let's do it again. Nice deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. Beautiful job, guys. Inhale, lift that right leg up. Exhale, stack it on top of the left. Remove the left hand. Inhale, right arm up to the ceiling. Exhale, dropping it down on the floor in front of you. Now take a nice deep inhale. Brace your abdominals and on the exhale, push yourself up onto the bolster again. All right, let's repeat all of that on the opposite side. So you at home, if you want, you can just do a 180 and turn around on your bolster. I am going to flip so that I am still facing you. Remember you're starting with the bolster on the upper half of your yoga mat to begin. Have it so that your hips are somewhere near the bottom and your knees are stacked. Then slowly allow yourself to drop yourself down over the bolster. Again, if you need the yoga block, now is the time to grab it to support your head. But check in that your armpit and the yoga bolster perfectly line up with one another so that we know your entire rib cage is supported by the bolster. Block or no block, whichever works best for you. Then in that position, allow yourself to make sure the knees and hips are stacked. Left arm, bring it up to the ceiling. And then as you exhale, bring it up and over your body. Now, let's go to the left armpit here first before we introduce the left leg. So with that left armpit, take that inhale and rotate it up so you get that little extra rotation through your trunk. And as you exhale, lengthen your arm. All right, now with the left leg, take the inhale, lift it up and lengthen it. And then on the exhale, drop it down. Make sure your right leg stays in contact with the floor so there's no excessive rotation through your trunk. Now with the left leg, inhale, straighten that left knee, and on the exhale, slide that leg back. Oh boy, does that feel good. 
Now, those two deep breaths into the belly with a focus on that left rib cage side. So take that deep inhale in and exhaling out. Let's do that again. Nice deep inhale in and exhaling out. Beautiful. Left leg. Inhale it up and then exhale. Bring it all the way back in. Left arm. Inhale it up and then exhale, dropping it down. Using your bolster and your left arm, pushing yourself back up into a seated position. Pull your bolster down so that you don't hit the top of your mat with your arm. Then allow yourself to sit yourself up on the bottom end of the bolster. So again, Remember, give yourself lots of space for your pelvis and your leg bone or your femur to maintain contact with it. Unless you're really tall, try to get your entire leg bone to your knee onto your bolster. Stack your legs. Walk your hands down so that you make yourself down into this inversion pose. Again, remember, your neck is going to be in a fairly neutral position, but if you want to, for a moment, support your head, you can but your right arm is gonna have a job in a few minutes. So in this position, allow yourself to feel like your arms and shoulders are stacked, knees and legs are stacked. Let's begin with the left arm again. So inhale that left arm up, and then as you exhale, reach that arm up and over. Don't worry so much about rotating through your trunk this time, because it's all about your low back muscle. Then take your right hand and grab that right leg so that there's not any significant rotation that happens. Left leg, inhale that leg up and away from you. And as you exhale, drop that foot down as close to the floor as you can make it. We are not done yet. Inhale, straighten that left knee. Exhale, slide that leg back. All right, now staying here in that beautiful elongation through that low back. Take that deep inhale into that left low back area. And then as you exhale, relaxing, let's do that one more time. Nice deep inhale in and exhale and relaxing. Beautiful left leg, inhale it up and then exhale, bring it back onto the right leg and then left arm, inhale it up and exhale it onto the floor. Now, using both of your arms, nice brace of your abdominals, take an inhale and on the exhale, push yourself back up into a seated position. Very nice. So let's just turn our bolster around and find ourselves in that nice, good opening through our low back in that modification of child's pose again. So take your toes, point them together, widen your knees, sit yourself back onto your heels, turn your bolster slide your bolster back between your thighs, slowly lower your belly, your chest, and the crown of your head down onto the bolster, drop your elbows down, three beautiful deep breaths into that low back here. So take a nice deep inhale into your belly, exhaling out, Two more times. Nice, deep, beautiful inhale in. And exhaling out. And one more time, deep inhaling in. And exhaling out. Slowly walking yourself back to hands and knees. Find your bolster so that you have your bolster close to the top part of your yoga mat. It is in line with your yoga mat and you have a yoga block or pillow to support your head at the end. Now we are going to lay on the bolster. You can do it in a beautiful way or you can do it just by falling onto the bolster. But let me show you the way that I think is the safest for your low back. So if you come to one of the bottom corners of the bolster and just literally sit your hip area on that corner of the bolster. Allow your elbow to come down so that your elbow is right next to the bolster. Then in this position, allow your left arm and your left leg to hold one another. Then just roll yourself onto the bolster. 
nice and sweet and simple without any flexion or compression to the discs of your low back. So see how you did. Allow yourself to find the position where you feel like your entire spine, so the tip of your tailbone all the way up is supported. Head is supported by our block. Very nice. Allow yourself in this position just to gently let your arms rest out to the side. Have your feet so that they feel like they're about six inches apart from one another. Lengthen your neck and settle your chin. Take your shoulder blades back and down. And let's just rest here for three nice, beautiful diaphragmatic breaths. So take a deep inhale into your belly. And then as you exhale, let that air relax out. Inhale into your belly. As you exhale, relaxing that air out. And one more time, inhale into the belly and exhaling out. Then allowing the right knee to come to your chest, hugging that right knee to the chest with both hands. Can you check in with your left leg for a second that because you're balancing your trunk and having to use more muscles, your left leg didn't fall out to the side. So stack that left leg up with the hip. Take a deep inhale here on the exhale, pull your right knee into your chest. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin down. Take another nice deep inhale, and then exhaling, pulling that right knee into your chest. Take a deep inhale into your belly here, and then exhaling out. Gently releasing the right foot to the floor and taking the left knee to the chest, taking the hands around the knee. Again, check in that your right leg didn't fall out to the side, trying to balance yourself. Keep your right knee and foot in line with your hip so that you have to use trunk muscles to balance yourself on this bolster. Take a nice deep inhale, and then on your exhale, pull your left knee into your chest. Deep inhale, exhaling, pulling that left knee into your chest. Make your neck long, chin settled into your throat. Take a deep inhale into your belly here and then exhaling out. Slowly releasing the left foot to the floor, taking the right knee back up to the chest, holding the knee into the chest. Check in please with that left leg. Take one deep inhale here, exhale, pull that right knee into the chest, pull your shoulder blades back and down. Now with your left leg, take an inhale and on the exhale, slide that left leg straight. Can you keep that right knee into your chest? Take a deep inhale here and exhale, pull that right knee into the chest more, keeping that left knee straight. Take a deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. Inhale, slide the left leg up, exhale, relax the right foot to the floor. Take the left knee to your chest. Take a deep inhale here, exhaling, pulling that left knee into your chest. Check in that your right knee is still upright in line with your right hip. Take a deep inhale here and on the exhale, slide that leg and straighten that right knee. Nice deep inhale. Exhale, pull that left knee back into your chest. Straighten that right knee. Take a deep inhale here and an exhale here. Inhale, sliding the right leg up, and then on the exhale, releasing the left foot to the floor. All right, let's work on strengthening our low back, also known as really working on strengthening the trunk muscles, specifically the anterior abdominal muscles. And so take your right knee to your chest, hold it with your right hand. Take your left knee to your chest, hold it with your left hand. Take a deep inhale here, and on the exhale, pull your knees to your chest. Can you balance yourself on your bolster without falling off? Hold yourself right here. Take a deep inhale into your belly and then exhaling out. Good. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Take your knees away from your chest, but have them in front of your hips. Then take your hands to the front of your thighs. Point those toes upward. Allow yourself to pull your shoulder blades back and down and start to gently push your hands into your thighs, 
your thighs into your hands, pull your fingertips up toward the ceiling and feel that contraction of your abdominals. Holding here as you inhale and holding here as you exhale. Two more breaths, inhaling in and exhaling out. And inhaling in and exhaling out. Now, just slowly lower your hands away. Do not let your legs move. Do not let them fall away from one another, which is usually what happens if your pelvic floor is weak. Keep them perfectly still. Keep those toes pointed up. Don't let anything move. It's like it's one connected piece. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin, take your fingertips and point your fingertips up towards the ceiling. Keep your abdominals braced and nice and strong and simply take an inhale and on the exhale, can you let your right arm reach up and over your head? Bringing it back on the inhale, exhaling, can you reach that arm up and over your head? Inhaling it back up, exhaling it up and over the head. And inhaling that right arm up, exhaling, holding right here. How's your toes doing? How are your knees doing? Are you still bracing through your abdominals? Let's take a break in just a second. Let's do the left arm. Take an inhale here, exhale, drop that left arm up and over. Inhale the arm back up. Don't let those legs move. They're connected to your trunk. Exhale that left arm up and over. Inhale that arm back up. Exhale that arm up and over. Inhale it back up and then exhale. Oh, bring your knees to your chest, relax your feet. Rest yourself here, lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Do not do too much rocking or you will rock yourself off the bolster, but you can do a little tiny rocky rock just to give your back muscles and abdominal muscles a quick little break before we make it harder. All right, now allow yourself to stack the knees back just in front of the hips. Toes are up, heels are down. Hands, take them to the front of the thighs, shoulder blades back and down, lengthen the neck, settle the chin, drop the rib cage. Start to gently push the hands into the knees, the knees into the hands, fingertips, reach them up to the ceiling. Take an inhale here and an exhale here. Inhaling and exhaling. And inhaling and exhaling beautiful now slowly let the hands come away from the knees this time allow your hands to gently come so that you're holding your hands to the center of your chest in prayer pose if you feel like we're going to be moving the legs ladies and gentlemen if you feel like you need additional balance take your fingertips down towards the floor you pick what works best for you Really harden and brace through your abdominals. We're gonna start with the right foot first. Keep your toes pointed up, take an inhale, and on the exhale, drop your heel to the floor. Inhale the leg back up, exhaling, heel to the floor. Lengthen the neck, settle the chin, inhaling back up, exhaling, heel to the floor, inhaling back up, and exhaling here. Keep the abdominals tight, rib cage down, lengthen the neck, settle the chin, tongue to the roof of the mouth. Everything is stable. Let's move the left leg. So take an inhale here, exhale, left heel to the floor. Don't let the right leg move. Inhale the leg back up, spine stay stable. Exhale the left heel to the floor. Inhale that right leg back up. Exhale that left heel to the floor and inhale that leg back up and exhale the knees into the chest relax your ankles all right as you can probably guess we have one more round of combining both so let yourself rest here for a moment small little rock and roll if you want but don't rock yourself off your bolster it's too hard to get back on it right lengthen your neck settle your chin rest your belly just take a deep inhale into your belly here. 
exhaling out. And one more time, deep inhale into the belly and relaxing. Round three, final round. Take your knees away from the chest so that they're just in front of the hips. Point your toes up, drop your heels. Rib cage is down, shoulder blades are back and down. Neck is long, chin is tucked into your throat. Arms are up to the ceiling unless you struggled with your balance in which use your arms for balance if you need to. So we are going to alternate arm and leg. So we're gonna start with our right leg and our left arm. So brace your abdominals, hold your trunk perfectly still on that bolster. Take, hold on a second. Let's engage our abdominals again, shall we? Hands to the thighs, thighs to the hands, fingertips upward. Take a deep inhale here. As you're starting to push, exhaling here. Two more breaths, just like we did. I almost forgot. Inhaling and exhaling and inhaling and exhaling. Now bring those fingertips up. Why do we do that? Some of you at home have really weak abdominals. If you don't turn the abdominals on first, you might end up using your back and we want to strengthen your back here. Shoulder blades back and down. All right, let's go to work here. Take a deep inhale in and on the exhale, right heel to the floor, left arm up. Don't let your left leg or arm move. Inhale it back up two more times. Exhaling, drop the heel, drop the arm. Inhaling it back up and exhaling it down and inhaling it back up and exhale, hold here. Left leg, right arm, take an inhale. Exhale, drop the heel and arm. Don't let the right leg or left arm move. Inhale them back up. Exhale them down. Inhale them back up. And finally, exhale them down. Inhale them back up and oh, exhale, pull your knees to your chest. Maybe do some circles of your ankles clockwise circles of your ankles counterclockwise, maybe even alternate the circles. Take a deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. Deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. Beautiful. Now slowly, one foot at a time, drop your feet to the floor. Take your arms and rest your arms out to the side of your body. Palms are down. So you're kind of anchoring your shoulder blades down and into the bolster. Simply take your right leg and cross it up and over your left leg. So we're doing an active hip opener here. So it really is important that you balance yourself with your arms. Now in this position, take a nice deep inhale on the exhale, brace and tighten your abdominals, and then inhale, lift your legs up and then exhale. Can you push that right knee out a little bit? You've got it one more time. Inhaling here and then exhaling, push that right knee out a little bit. Inhaling here and then exhaling, dropping that left foot down. Very nice. Uncross the right leg and cross the left ankle over the right knee. Arms are anchored, shoulder blades are barking down, length is, neck is long, chin is tucked. Take a deep inhale and on the exhale, brace the abdominals. Now, inhale, lift the leg here. Exhale, push the left knee away. Brace those abdominals. Inhaling, holding the lift. Exhaling, pushing that left knee away. Finally, inhaling here and exhaling, dropping that leg down, uncrossing the leg. Slowly rolling yourself, gently of course, off of your bolster. No falling, right? Of course not, no and allow yourself to come down to the bottom of the bolster. You are done with your block, so you can just kind of move it away to the side. And we're gonna do a modification of spinal twist using our bolster today. So stack your knees up like you had before, but you're now down at the end of the bolster. Have the bolster so it's closer to your hip, not closer to the bottom of your leg. And then take your hands, and straddle your hands to both sides of the bolsters. Relax your feet, allow your knees to stack. 
take a deep inhale and pull your rib cage forward, exhaling as you bend your knees, dropping the rib cage down onto the mat. Now, can you take a moment to check in with your knees that they're stacked so that the left knee did not fall forward and really all you did is just trunk rotate? This is a spinal, I mean, uh, pelvic rotate. This is a spinal rotation, not a hip and pelvic rotation. So stack those knees up, keep that rib cage down onto the mat. Full spinal rotation here, turning the head towards the right, relaxing the elbows down, taking the tongue to the roof of the mouth, holding yourself here. Nice deep inhales into the left side of your rib cage and exhaling out. Inhaling in and exhaling out. And one more nice deep inhale in and exhaling out. And then using your hands, placing them underneath your shoulders, pushing yourself back up off your bolster and doing the exact same thing on the opposite side. So I'm just gonna turn so that you can see me, but you can just do simply a 180 with your bolster at home. Place your bolster so that your left hip pointer now is to the end, but the leg is slightly free, stacking the knees and the feet up to the side of your mat like you did before, allowing your hands to come so that your hands are straddling the bolster. Keeping the knees stacked, take a deep inhale, reach the rib cage forward, and then as you exhale, drop the chest down onto the bolster. Check in that the right knee didn't slide fold forward. So stack those knees back up as the rib cage drops. And then in that position, resting the elbows down, slowly rotate the head towards the left, unless the neck says, uh-uh, you're not doing that. And then just rotate it towards the right. Now, deep inhale into the right side of the rib cage and the low back. And then exhaling out. Two more breaths like we did on the opposite side. So nice deep inhaling in. And exhaling out. and inhaling in and exhaling out. Walking your hands back underneath your shoulders and pushing yourself up and then taking your bolster, bringing the bolster to the very end of your mat. Allow yourself then to figure out that position where just your heels are gonna be on your bolster. Lay yourself down onto your side and then gently roll yourself over onto your back. And once you're on your back, allow yourself to take your right knee to your chest and your left knee to your chest. Take a deep inhale and on the exhale, pull those knees into your chest. Take a deep inhale into your belly here, lengthen your neck, settle your chin, exhaling out. And then one leg at a time. Rest the legs down onto the bolster. Now, what I'd like you to do today is to find the position where your heels are at the very edges of your bolster. Part of your calf can be touching the bolster, but do not have the bolster where your ankles are free. Allow yourself to rest here. Gently take your shoulders underneath you. Arms out to the side of you, lengthen your neck and settle your chin. Take a deep inhale into your belly here. Open that mouth and ah, exhale out, steaming up that mirror. Two more breaths, inhale into the nose. Open that mouth and ah. Steam that mirror up. And one more time, inhaling in. And <sighs> steam up the mirror. Now, fully rest your body. Take the last movement twitch, whatever you need. Make sure your neck is nice and long and your chin is gently tucked into your throat. 
Check in that your tongue is resting beautifully onto the roof of your mouth. Gently close your eyes. And let's take one last moment to be aware of that body. So feel where your left heel is. Move up the calf. Feel where the point is that the calf and the bolster no longer touch. And then keep being aware of your leg bones until all of a sudden you feel that point where your buttock touches the mat. And then feel your right heel. Feel that point as you move up the calf where the calf loses touch with the bolster. Keep being aware of the body and move up the leg until all of a sudden you feel that point where the right buttock touches the mat. Can you take your awareness to where those two points on that buttock are touching the mat and they come up to become one heavy point in the center of your pelvis where your sacrum is. And as you move up your low back, can you feel the point where the low back doesn't touch the mat versus the point where the low back does touch the mat closer to the rib cage? And as you're moving your awareness up, can you feel where your left rib cage touches the mat and your right rib cage touches the mat? As you move your way up, can you feel that point where the left shoulder no longer touches? And can you feel that point where the right shoulder no longer touches? And go to your left knuckles and your left hand. Can you feel which knuckles touch the floor? Move your awareness up to your left elbow and find that point on that shoulder that you just focused on. And then take your body awareness to your right knuckles. Feel which knuckles are touching the floor. Bring your mind's eye up through the right arm, feeling what's in contact with the floor until you come right up to that point on the right shoulder where it no longer touches the floor. Now imagine visualizing the space between that lower neck and the mat where there's no contact. Visualize the body's arch of that neck until you feel your point where that skull touches the mat. How big of a circle is it that that skull touches the mat? And then take your attention to your mouth again. Don't move the tongue, but where does your tongue like to rest? Is it efficiently on the roof of the mouth or is it somewhere else? Go up to your eyes, are they gently closed? Eyebrows, are they soft or are they being contracted? And finally, forehead, do you have the muscles relaxed or are you using those muscles to make an expression? Keep that body still. Slow inhale into your belly. Mirror is on top of your face. Open your mouth and exhaling out. <sighs> inhaling into the nose and exhaling. <sighs> Final inhaling in and exhaling. Place a beautiful smile on your face, ladies and gentlemen. 
and then start to wiggle your fingers and your toes and make circles with your wrists and your ankles. And then when you feel like you're ready, slide your feet off of your bolster and gently roll yourself to your left or your right side. Take a deep inhale there and then exhale. And then on an exhale, push yourself up into a seated position. Find yourself in that simple, easy pose. Hands are to your hearts and smiles are on your faces. Take a nice deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. Namaste. The highest in me salutes the highest in you. Thank you.